If you're like most people, you've probably wondered at some point in your life just how much force does the Achilles tendon of an alligator carry when it pushes on the ground with a force of 75 pounds? Well, you don't have to wonder anymore because we're going to solve that problem today. This is a problem that will really give us some good practice in doing a free body diagram that might be a little bit different than the ones that you've seen uh, in other times because we've got a set of axes that is rotated and I don't want that to scare anybody. So let's get started. So we have this foot over here of the alligator. There is a force down here, as I said, of 75 pounds. There's also this angle over here that is known. It is 81 degrees. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start by showing a couple of things that we know over there. What we want to do here is we want to take uh, a free body diagram and draw a free body diagram of the thing that matters here. And so what we need to see here is that the ankle of the alligator behaves just like a pin joint. As a matter of fact, I believe it says that in here, assuming the ankle just uh, acts just like a frictionless pin rotating at the origin. So uh, that's what we can do. And ultimately what, I, what that's going to look like is something like this, where we've got a portion of the foot that kind of comes up like this and a portion that comes down like this. Okay, now we need to set up our axes. So one of the axes that we have uh, points out this way. That's our x axis. But then we also have another axis that we're calling the x prime axis. We're going to show that pointing out this way. Okay. Uh, perpendicular to that x prime axis, we have a y axis. It kind of points up like this, or a y prime axis, I should say. And then we, uh, of course, have the regular y axis pointing up like this. Uh, one of the forces is actually, you know, not that hard to put on here, honestly, because it is that force in the tendon that we are trying to find. Uh, it's actually called T sub tendon here. Okay, that's what we are trying to find, and it is parallel with the Y prime axis. One of the pieces of information we know is that A is 1.7 inches, and so one of the things I'll put on here right away is that it's 1.7 inches. Across right there. All right, so so far so good. The next thing I want to put on here is our force of 75 pounds. It's down here and it looks like it points uh, not quite straight vertically and the angle is given there of 81 degrees. And as we said at the very beginning this force is 75 pounds. Okay. Well, so far so good. The only other thing that we need to do is well, a couple things. One, we should probably show on here the types of reactions that would exist on a pin joint. Remember, a pin joint doesn't allow uh, translation to the side or translation up and down. And so the two things that prevent those kinds of motion would be reaction forces left and right and up and down. And I'll just call these R sub ankle maybe y and then this is our ankle not angle ankle uh, in the x okay just to acknowledge that i have those two forces happening at the uh, at the ankle joint okay so the next thing we need to do is is probably the the difficult part for most people and it's to understand that we are given uh, a couple of pieces here of coordinate data, x and y coordinate data, for where this point is uh, where the foot makes contact with the ground. And so what we're going to do with that information is actually apply those as a couple of dimensions on this diagram. Um, if the y coordinate is negative 5.1 inch, that means we're 5.1 inches below that x-axis. Okay, and the other information we have is how far it is from the y-axis over to where this force is applied. So I'll just show that right here and say 
that length right there. Since it's negative 2.5, that's 2.5 to the left of the y-axis, so this is just 2.5 inches. Okay, And I believe that actually sets up our free body diagram where it has everything that we need to know on it. Uh, as always with your free body diagram, what you do is you uh, write equilibrium equations. And so we'll start that down here. We're going to sum moments around the ankle. And we'll take counterclockwise to be positive. Here we've got the uh, amount of force in the tendon that tends to create a counterclockwise rotation around the ankle which we are counting as positive so I'll take T sub tendon and its uh, length from its line of action to the ankle is just 1.7 inches okay next we need to think about the 75 pound force and how it creates moments around the axis uh, let's deal first with the horizontal component. The horizontal component points uh, to the left there. Okay, this horizontal component component would be like this, um, and its magnitude would be um, 75 pounds times the cosine of 81 degrees. And you may notice I put a negative sign here. The reason for that is that that leftward force below the ankle tends to create a clockwise tendency to rotate around the ankle and so that's why I'm counting that as a negative. Next we need to multiply this by how far it is from the ankle so that'd be 5.1 inches. Okay and that takes care of that horizontal component. Next we want to look at this vertical component to get that magnitude of that vertical component we need to take 75 pounds times the sine of 81 degrees and take that and multiply it by how far it is from the line of action of that component relative to the ankle joint and that would be this two and a half inches. And again you may have noticed I actually didn't put a sign here. Um, that sign is going to be also negative because the tendency is going to be for this force to rotate uh, this body clockwise around the ankle. So I'll put a negative sign in there like this and I believe that takes care of all of the uh, things that would create moments around the ankle. So the only thing left to do is to solve for the uh, force in the tendon and we can do that just by plugging it into the calculator. Some of you have seen this before. Um, it'll solve these types of single variable equations quite quite readily. So we've just put in x, that's the variable we will use for that force, times 1.7 minus 75 times the cosine of 81 degrees times 5.1 Okay, then we need to subtract 75 times the sine of 81 degrees times 2.5. Okay, now this is the left side of the equation. What we're going to do is set this equal to zero. So I hit alpha equals. Okay, and put a zero in there. All right, and so what we're going to do now is just hit shift solve and we'll solve for x and what it gives us is an answer for the T in the tendon, 144.13. The units on that would be uh, pounds because that's what I have for my force basis here. And so I choose E in these answers. So I hope this has been useful for you. And if it has, I'd appreciate it if you would hit subscribe on there. And I hope you watch more of these videos too.